Hi, and welcome back. In this video, we want to talk through an accrual accounting process and how this relates to salaries payable and salaries expense. When we have these artificial time periods in accounting for companies' financial events, the accounting periods and the payroll dates don't always coincide to where we can not have to do some sort of an adjusting entry. So I want to walk through today exactly why this happens and how you do it. So let's get started. Hi there. In this video, we're going to walk through an accrued expense that is called salaries payable. And depending on the frequency and timing of payroll cycles in a company um, and the definition of an accounting period for a company, you can have salaries that have been accumulated but not yet paid to your employees. This represents an accrued expense that we need to recognize on the balance sheet because we will owe this money to the employees in the following month, for example. So here's a graphic that can help describe why we have to do this. If you look at this particular month of the year, on the 10th of April, there is a payday. And that payday represents the two weeks ending April 4th, uh, yeah, ending April 4th. So it was accrued for in March, but it's actually paid in April. On the 24th of April, you have a payday that represents two weeks that stretch from April the 5th until April the 18th. So all of that is paid in April. We don't have to make any kind of accrual for it or anything like that. However, on May the 8th, there's another payday. But when we're closing the April books, we have to recognize that period from April the 19th through April the 30th because people have been working and we will owe them that money and we want to recognize that expense in the month that it was incurred. This goes back to that video about the fact that we have to recognize expenses in the period that they were incurred. So how will we do this? All right, so ABC Company is closing its books for the month of April. And the company only operates from Monday through Friday. And they incur, incur an even and consistent $100,000 for payroll each two-week payroll period. So what is our accrual at the end of April? First of all, we, we first have to take a look at, all right, we have $100,000. It's consistent and even. We have 10 working days. So $100,000 divided by 10 days is $10,000 per day that we pay payroll. So from April the 18th, there are nine working days to the end of the month. So we're going to accrue for April $90,000 of salary expense for the month of April. Here's our typical thinking process, and you've seen this a million times by now. So has a financial event taken place? Yes, it has. And what accounts do we use? We're going to use salaries payable, and we're going to use salaries expense. Do we have more or less of salaries expense? We have more. Do we have more or less of salaries payable? We have more. Let's check our logic of our journal entry. So our salaries expense is classified as an expense. Its normal balance is a debit. So to have more salaries expense, we will have to debit that account. For salaries payable, that is a liability. Its normal balance is a credit. And to have more liability, we will credit it. So yay, our journal entry balances. We have $90,000 worth of debit and we have $90,000 worth of credit. So when we have incurred an expense, but we have not yet paid for it, we must carry this on the balance sheet in the form of a payable of account of some sort, and we recognize the expense in the period that this expense was incurred. Thus, an expense account is also used. Salaries payable is a common adjustment that companies have to make because of timing of payroll checks being cut and the definition of the accounting periods. So with that, that's our, the end of our topic today. Hope you had fun with that one. 
and we'll talk again soon. Bye now.